sensible thing and be ready to leave. Was it just like, no, I'm not packing my bags because we're not going to lose? <laughs> that's right. You know, that's the attitude. You got to have a little swagger like that, right? You got a little more confidence than the other team, and you know, everybody's uh, you're, you're prepared for this time, right? It's it, there's no one packing their bags. It's, that's having star Justin Rohr talking about having forced a one-game winner-take-all in their playoff series against Pensacola tonight. The winner takes it all, and the loser takes a fall in the third and deciding game. Havoc just kept falling behind and responding, but this is serious business as they take the ice right here. First period on the power play. Jeff White will fire and a little redirect, and Travis Codfeld will score, and we are tied at one, and there is quite the ruckus in downtown Huntsville after that goal, and, you know, I've got the fever, and the only cure is more cowbell. Still in the first, the Havoc falls behind 3-2, but Mike Carter sets it up to Jeff Winchester like a rifle shot from Winchester. He scores. We're tied at three after one, but again, Huntsville is not happy unless challenged. Kevin Galan of Pensacola will score in traffic, and Pensacola is up 4-3, to three, but that just gets the Havoc going again. And yes, former Havoc coach John Gibson showing the kind of defense that he played over the years. Score tied in the third actually right there it is Brett Liscom putting it home and we are tied heading into the third period former Abbott coach John Gibson did show what they had and right here we are in overtime and yes the beautiful, beautiful effort from the Huntsville Havoc right there. Brett Liskum puts it home and everybody goes crazy. And the Havoc comes out roaring and they win it. The final score, five to four. They will play Knoxville in the next round. Well, you put one word, just heart. You know, when it came down, I think we wanted it more than they did. Um, you know, we tried working on their defense the whole series. And I think, you know, that really showed in the third game. They got a little bit tired and we took advantage. Is this your best Easter ever? I think so. We've had some memorable ones, but, uh, you know, this has got to be right up there. Uh, you know what? A couple unfortunate goals, you know, a couple bad bounces, but uh, that's playoff hockey. you got to bounce back right away. You know, we all show character. Imagine you're on a bus with about 30 other people, and you're driving back from Shreveport, Louisiana, and the bus breaks down in the middle of the night. And that's not the thing you're most upset about. That is how the Alabama Vipers feel today after a robbery that would have made Bonnie and Clyde proud occurred last night in Bossier City. Despite five Dan Alexander touchdowns, the Vipers need some magic. Final play of the game, down six. Kevin Eakin, it's Michael Johnson with them. The fake on the hook and lateral. He's in the clear. He gets down inside the five. Laterals to Jeremy Greer, who scores. At least it's the tying touchdown. That is until the officials confer and realize the game is being played in Louisiana. So they want to get out of there. So they reverse the call. You see he was not down. Bossier City Shreveport wins 54-48. The Vipers open up at home on Friday night, but when we come back, Bama looks for the sweet sweep, but Auburn has a little something for him. Next. When Alabama plays Auburn, it is all about pride, but most fans mainly only bring up any other sport besides football when their team is winning that sport. And Alabama fans were starting to bring up baseball after two straight wins in their series. With Auburn, the Tigers look to salvage this one. It had been all high fives for Bama until today. The bats get going for Auburn. Here's former Grissom Tiger star Hunter Morris making Bama pay for an inside fastball. The double makes it 6 nothing. Auburn. Bama does make some bids for some runs, but it just doesn't happen nearly enough for them. Auburn gets the win. The final score, run it down right there, 7-1. to one. In the David versus Goliath type image of the NCAA tournament, there have been a lot of slingshots, but now Butler pulls back the rock against Duke. They may be without center Matt Howard, who has a head injury. It's a game day decision tomorrow. Here's how the last two teams standing are feeling. You know, it's definitely going to be a big story, I'm sure. You know, people are calling Butler the Cinderella, and, you know, of course, Duke, the big-time the big program, you know. And, you know it's, but it's going, to, it's going to be a fight. You know, both teams are very good, and, you know, I just, I just, can't, ready, I, I just can't wait to play. Our guys did a great job defending in the last 30 minutes of the game. Really locked on, made it difficult. I think Michigan State had 21 at the 10-minute mark or 9-minute mark of the uh, first half, and, and after that scored, I guess, 29. So guys really, really dug in. We had a lot of guys that had to and, and did a great job. And, you know, this team and this program has been built on guys ready to, ready to, to come in and contribute to the good of the team, and it makes me proud to be their coach. Over the years, Coach Bob Huggins has never seemed all that huggable, but he had to win some people over yesterday. As his star player, Deshaun Butler, is injured on this drive, hurting his knee, and you never know how that will affect his future as a pro. But look at the coach consoling Butler and letting him know he is not just a commodity to him, one of the great moments in this tournament. While I believe they're already carving the word Connecticut into the championship trophy, there are still some women who look for the Davida versus Goliath storyline. Final Four Oklahoma taking on Stanford, and yes, that is a Hakeem Olajuwon watching his daughter Abby playing for Oklahoma, but 
Mecca Ogwumikidra. I can't say her name. Jerry, scroll that down so I can try and read it one more time. Ogwumiki. Yes, indeed. The hoop and the foul. I still got that wrong. Stanford up 16. She had 38 points. So I better have it right. Oklahoma did make a little run into it, but Stanford knows it would be a cardinal rule to choke it away. Stanford will play for the championship 73-66. Last report, UConn was only up 13. Well, we know that the Eagles really wanted the face of the franchise out of town, enough to send Donovan McNabb to a division rival with lots of pieces in place. The Eagles announced tonight that they have traded their quarterback to the Washington Redskins. McNabb, a six-time Pro Bowler, led the Eagles to five NFC Championship games and one Super Bowl. The Eagles get a second-round pick this year and another pick next year, and is good as he's been just a couple draft picks that you don't know how it would work out it's like us putting a couple interns in for Hayes who uh who's they going to pick up maybe Brett Favre he's played for everybody else well he's not but I love watching him play I love watching them both play yeah. I don't understand this life this world oh, where's the value oh no an experience put me in for him. what do you think I could see it they'd, yeah. have, they'd have to find you all five feet tall of me you got to be a good player mm -hmm. <laughs> all right what about